team break. Let's do this. Break. All right. Whenever now you're I have ready. Pee, so. Alexa I just is rolling. Believe Hannah's back. This is going to be the best show ever. I. I'm in my Hannah paint clothes, so we got to go. <laughs> Am I good to go? You're good to go. Cool. I guess if that's what you want to call it. Kyle, I was only gone a week, dude. You're killing me, Schmalls. This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Whelan, also brought to you by Hercules Tires. Now, with the latest NASCAR local, regional, touring, and international racing news and views, here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. I'm Hannah Newhouse, joined as always by Kyle Rickey. And Kyle, I was gone a whole seven days. You did last week's show without me with Justin Bonsignor. Have you missed me? Because prior to the show, all you talked about was how excited you were to see me. Yeah, we, we missed you last week, I guess. I mean, Justin, I think, kind of sort of mentioned it. Uh, he understood, though, why you were gone. You were back home visiting with the family in Idaho. I think Dylan raced one of the family trucks at uh, your home racetrack. Uh, so I know it was a big week for you, and, you know, that family time is valuable. So we, get, we got it. It was definitely hard to uh, leave the cool temperatures, the zero humidity out in Idaho right now. Uh, came back to... Pretty hot temperatures, but fortunately over the last couple of weeks, it has cooled down. It's starting to look like fall here in the Carolinas. It was nice over the weekend, and it's supposed to be nice probably the next week or so. So looking forward to that. But speaking of Justin Bonds and your, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour was supposed to run on Wednesday, and then rain forced them over into Thursday, and a new winner in the 2020 season came out of that, Ron Silk. Uh, Justin Bonds and your, coming home second over McKennedy, Pasterak, and Kobe, uh, and it's starting to shape up in a points battle here between not only Kobe and uh, Bonsignor, we've got a couple other contenders in there as well, but it was an interesting race this last weekend. It was a great race. Uh, the NASCAR Wheel and Modify Tour, a great field of cars. 28 took the green flag at uh, my home track, Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park, just up the road here in Killingly uh, at the Thompson Speedway. Uh, Ron Silk did pick up the win. You mentioned the points, though. Uh, Bonsignor, Kobe, separated by only 18. They are and have been the championship favorites now for a couple of years. John McKennedy, 32 points back in third. Craig Lutz and Dave Sapienza rounding out the top five, 45 separating all of them. Um, so tight, but uh, really, if Justin Bonson, you're in Doug Kobe, you're in a pretty comfortable spot right now. One more note on the race last week. Ryan Priest was there. Uh, Ryan Priest took the lead late in the going on the outside, an incredible pass. And then Ryan Priest ran out of gas while leading with like five laps to go. So it was a tough night, but that, I feel like that's the way 2020 has gone for Ryan, whether it be on the Cup Series level or now in the modified level. Yeah, definitely a frustrating drive home, I can only imagine. I know they drove through the night to get back to North Carolina, get everything turned around and go racing this weekend uh, for Poor Ryan Priest, but again, he'll take any opportunity to get back behind the wheel of a modified. But they're going to Loudon this weekend, Kyle. And I feel like it's a wild card race to some extent because we usually see someone like a Bobby Santos come out of this and collect a victory, which could shake up our points a little bit more. And you mentioned Bobby Santos. He is on the entry list for this weekend. We'll drive a second car for Dave Sapienza. Um, those two have been... Uh, Fairly friendly for the last couple of years. We've seen Bobby jump in his cars before. Uh, this is the only race at the Magic Mile this year. Usually we come into the Musket 200 with a race or two under our belts already from the July NASCAR race weekend. Uh, that did not happen this year because of uh, the New Hampshire restrictions. So, yeah, it is a wild card race. And, and But I expect Doug and Justin to be up there along with Bobby. Uh, Craig Lutz, who we haven't really talked a lot about uh, on the uh, modified tour as far as New Hampshire is concerned. Uh, going to get some drafting experience. Uh, Timmy Salamito, uh, not going to be racing this weekend because of damage from uh, Thompson this past weekend. So hopefully uh, they can get that car put back together in time for the last couple of events of the year at Stafford and Thompson, which leads to one more point. A uh, bit of news from the Modifieds. Riverhead Raceway, they were supposed to be one of the final four stops of the Modifieds in a couple of weeks on Long Island in New York. But again, because of the New York restrictions, they had to cancel their event. The track is optimistic, trying to host their uh, Modified Tour event in October, I believe on the 17th. Uh, NASCAR has not yet made that official, though. 
And speaking of more modified news, you'd mentioned Stafford there. Burt Meyer is actually teaming up with a uh, local SK modified guy and uh, standout, Keith Rocco. We talk about him all the time. They're teaming up this weekend to go run up at Stafford. So we'll dial up Burt here in just a little bit to talk to Burt about how this all came together. But before we get into that, also this past weekend, the Arkham, Arkham Menard series was at I-44 Speedway in Lebanon. Uh, contact. I, I feel like that just comes with the word Arca when we talk about it anymore. People were off in the grass taking each out for the lead. Um, and we saw Sam Mayer get his third victory of the season. Brett Holmes now down to one point between him and Michael Self. But I'm a little nervous, Kyle, for the next time that all of these guys and girls get on the track again together because no one left there, except for maybe Sam Mayer, no one left yeah. Lebanon happy with each other. No, so I think Sam was the only one that avoided all the contact, and it's because he was out front for, for 49 laps. Um, then there's Chandler Smith, who was involved in not one, not two, but three of the night's caution flags, as uh, that car was pretty banged up after the event. He still finished in the sixth spot. Uh, Brett Holmes was involved in an accident. He was able to come back to finish in second. Taylor Gray, Ty Gibbs, and Haley Deegan finished out the top five. She led early, but was also involved in an incident, I believe, with Brett, I think, if memory serves me right. There were like three or four incidents, and they were all battling for either the lead or for second, uh, right there toward the front of the field. So. A wild event at Lebanon I-44, first time in a number, or well, first time ever that the Arca Series raced there, and the first time a lot of those drivers have ever seen that racetrack. Yeah, definitely some hurt feelings and some frustration that came out of that race. So looking forward to them getting back on the racetrack again together with everyone. Um, but also, we talked about lots of schedule changes happening within the Arca Menard Series. Uh, originally, they were scheduled to go to DeCoin, the dirt short track in uh, Illinois, and yep. uh, they are. No longer going there. We knew that was going to happen, but hadn't decided where they were going and when. So it has been announced that they will be going to Winchester Speedway. It will take that date, September 19th. And they will have fans that will be allowed for the Arc Menard Series race with the help and guidance of local health officials. So um, cool to see that they'll be able to race in front of fans. Once again, I know they've been able to at some of these racetracks uh, in smaller proportions and uh, with restrictions, but they will be going to uh, Winchester on September 19th. And again, you will be able to watch that on NASCAR Track Pass or NBC Track Pass as well. But first, we're going to get on the phone with Burt Myers here and talk a little bit of modified racing at staff for this up and coming weekend. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. And we talked about it at the open of the show. Two drivers have teamed up for a special debut here at Stafford Motor Speedway. Burt Myers joins us now on the guest line. First, first off, thanks for coming and hanging out with us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Yeah, my pleasure. Glad to be on. Pretty exciting weekend ahead of you as you've teamed up with Keith Rocco to head to Stafford Motor Speedway to run the TC13 SK Modified race. Uh, talk about how this all came together, the conversation between you and Keith and your excitement. Uh, looking forward to this event. Well, you know, I've, I've been up and uh, I've had the opportunity of racing at Stafford in the Tour Mod a couple times and uh, always made it an opportunity or made it a, a, a exception to go up and, and stand at the fence and watch those guys in the SK. They put on a heck of a show. and. You know, I've always wanted to do it, and I uh, ran into Keith at one of the awards banquets in Charlotte a couple years back, and he said, man, we need to get you up there. We need to get you in one of my cars and, and run one of these races. And, uh, you know, of course, in the south, down here with North Carolina, with the restrictions we have, 
um, t- getting a little bit tired of sitting on my hands. So I made a phone call to Keith, and we put something together, and, and I'm looking really forward to, to going up there and battling with those guys. Friday night's event uh, remembers the uh, the late, great Ted Christopher, a multi-time champion at Stafford and a, uh, a, a I think, the all-time winner at the Stafford Motor Speedway. Uh, do, you, do you, Obviously, your majority of races uh, is in the South, in North and South Carolina. Teddy uh, was always up in New England. But did you guys ever cross paths at all? Any memories from, from Ted? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'd like to think that uh, I was one of the guys that um, – that Teddy had a pleasure of trying to <laughs> trying to race hard with in the South. Um, there were several times where the first couple times we raced together, we did not get along. I don't think we liked each other very much. Uh, he was driving the Hillbillies car some, and um, then a couple of North-South shootouts in the brake bunch car. He ran uh, some, a couple of tour races with us. And um, I just, me and Teddy just kind of went head to head for several times. And um, in 2010, I went to, uh, went to Thompson for the icebreaker. And I can remember the weekend before that, we were at one of the Southern Modified races he was at. And um, and I, I said, Teddy, I'm coming to Thompson. He said, well, good. And I said, well, can you give me any tips? Can you, can you tell me anything about it? And I can't use the exact words that Teddy used, but he let me know it was exit 100. And, and there was a little bit more colorful um, animation to that. And uh, when I went up and... Um, Actually, the first time I ever went to Thompson, I knocked him off the pole at the time and ended up qualifying fifth. And I remember he pulled up beside me and winked at me. He said, there you go, Dirty South. And ever since then, me and Teddy, just every time we were at a racetrack together, he would make it a point to come over and speak. And, um, you know, it was heartbreaking. Even here in the South, we didn't grow up watching Teddy. And, and it wasn't a weekly event for us. But we, we always knew that, that Teddy was one of the, the – the, the modified stars, if not, you know, the only modified star in our eyes at that time. And um, to be able to go up and run this race in, in his memory and his honor and um, and try to go up and win this thing is going to be uh, is going to be special for me, even though I am from the South. And a great event that Stafford has planned for this weekend. But you mentioned it there, Bert, uh, a lot of your racing career down here in the South, Bowman Gray, but you have made a uh, trips and races on the NASCAR wheel and modified tour, but what is your overall experience with Stafford uh, and going and racing the, a class as prestigious as the SK Modifieds, where a lot of these guys, obviously they race here every weekend, year in and year out. Well, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be tough. And, 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 and to me, that's what makes it exciting. Um, you know, I, I guess the best way I know how to put it is this is one of the reasons that I partnered with Keith Rocco. Uh, I knew that there was going to be a lot of boxes to check. And I knew that I needed to get as many of those boxes checked before I left North Carolina. So partnering with Keith Rocco and his equipment with his knowledge uh, of Stafford Speedway and in that division, I knew that it was going to give me the best chance to be competitive. And I was asked, what would I consider a good day, uh, you know, a top 10 or whatever? And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to win. I don't mean to sound arrogant, but, you know, I wouldn't go if I didn't think I could win the race. Um, but I know that these guys, they get in there and they get after it. And uh, it's funny, <laughs> Ryan Priest texted me about 20 minutes ago and said, um, better be ready to use that Nerf bar. So it, it's, it's, it's really cool, the excitement that's building up around it. Uh, but I'm ready to go up there and race with these guys. I respect those guys so much because I know they do get in there and they get after it, and, and they do it for the same reasons that I do it, and that's because we love modified racing. And Keith, the current point leader at the Stafford Motor Speedway and the winner of the last two Friday nights uh, of racing at the Stafford Speedway. It's a big night of or a big weekend of racing up here this weekend, Bert. Uh, Stafford on Friday night, the Modified Tour running on Saturday at the New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Are there any plans to head even further north for the Musket 200 on Saturday? I would love to say yes, but I don't think we're going to be able to pull it off this year. Um, that was, you know, as everybody knows, when they made fun of me because I said I was giddy after finishing third. <laughs> um, you know, that that was one that was on my bucket list. I, I love that track. I love that kind of racing. Uh, it, it's as close to guys like me down here in the south running, you know, half-mile short track. Um, it's as close as we'll get to speedway-type racing with the drafting and, and the way you have to run that race with the strategies. And um, I absolutely loved it. But this year, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull it off. Um, but I am going to get to come and run Stafford and, and uh, see what I can do up there. 
And Bert, you'd mentioned that earlier, uh, how excited you were to go and race Stafford this weekend because you felt like you've been sitting on your hands. Bowman Gray, obviously, not opening this season uh, for 2020 due to all the COVID precautions and everything. What have you been doing the last uh, six months now to pass the time? Well, um, I'll tell you, it, it's it's a tricky situation. And, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but um, we've been able to spend more time with family. We've been able to take a few more vacations and a couple more trips. And um, not that I've not that I'm burnt out or not that I'm done racing. Um, but I'll be honest with you, it's given me an opportunity to realize that there are things in life more important or, well, you know, your family is more important than racing. So to be able to experience these different things, um, outside of racing, uh, has been a refreshing, uh, type season. But on the other hand, I, I am tired of sitting on my hands when it comes to the racing side of things. It's, it's what I've done my whole life. It's what my family's always done. So to not be at the racetrack just doesn't feel normal. Um, we've been able to run a handful of shows here in the South. I think we've done a total of five this year. We had our first smart race in over a decade a couple of weekends ago at Caraway Speedway. So that's trying to get ramped back up. But um, until we can, until some things can change, um, hopefully later this year, the restrictions are pretty tight down here. So um, we're just looking forward to some change here pretty soon. And that smart tour race seemed uh, fairly healthy a couple of uh, weeks ago. A 16, 18 cars showed up at that event uh we're talking about bowman gray were you surprised i, I mean I, I get it a lot of the the lure and the draw to bowman gray not only the tight racing but also the twelve thousand fans that ring that place that could not happen this year uh that said were you surprised that they didn't elect like a pay-per-view type of an event like some of the other short tracks down there have well i think that um it, the funny thing is 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 being, and I think I can say this easily, being the most popular short track in the country has pros and cons. I think that mm -hmm. being the most popular track in the country, they're under the microscope. So everything they do is going to be, you know, they're going to poke holes in it. They're going to try to analyze everything that they do. So there's a lot of politics involved. Uh, you know, Winston-Salem, the city of Winston-Salem actually owns Bowman Gray Stadium. And then the, the family that has run the place for as long as I can remember has a lease to race there. And then Winston-Salem State uh, facilities, their, their um, sports marketing and their, their sports management facilities are on the property there. So there was just a lot of things that were involved. And uh, from the very beginning, the rumor that we heard was that they were not going to, if they couldn't operate at full capacity, that they weren't going to operate. And uh, I think they, we were trying to be optimistic by thinking that they were going get to the, the get going this year. And then after we got about halfway through the season, we kind of figured out that it wasn't going to happen. But I tell you, it's been, you know, my family has been a, was, a, was a part of the very first races at Bowman Gray Stadium back with my, my grandpa, Billy, and his great uncle, Bobby. And then, of course, my dad and my brother. And, and you know, if you're a Myers, you grew up at Bowman Gray Stadium. Uh, it's been really weird, you know, to, to, to think that there hasn't been a 2020 season. And whenever we go back and we look in the programs and we look at the record book, and there's going to be a blank spot where 2020 used to be. Um, it, you know, and I know everybody feels the same way, but it's just been a really crazy time. Um, but to say that I was surprised that they, that they ended up not racing this year, after we kind of saw what was going on in this country and especially in this state, we kind of figured that this was the result that was coming. Yeah, it's definitely been weird to see how each and every short track has had to approach this season with the protocols under state and local, you know, regulations. And it was a, a bummer to see, you know, Bowman Gray have to make that call. But like you said, uh, I think when it comes down to it, being one of those popular short tracks, uh, they made the right call by that. But Bert, we're excited to watch you this weekend at Stafford. Kyle, are you going to be there? I will be there Friday night. Well, perfect. All right. You'll have Kyle in the well, stands for you. <laughs> I was also, I'm also, uh, I also want to let everybody know that uh, on Friday, you can watch it live on uh is it stafford speedway tv you can watch that's it live stream on a pay-per-view uh so i know that there i've had a lot of people here in the south ask how they can watch uh, me participate at stafford motor speedway so there you go you can participate by uh, by watching it on pay-per-view and i think they said that 25 percent of every sale goes back to the drivers so that's pretty cool that the track is investing some of that back into the teams and the drivers but 
Uh, to say that I'm excited is an understatement. I can't wait to get there. And um, Kyle, you come look me up whenever whenever you get there. We'll find you. Look forward to it. All right. Thanks. Awesome, Bert. Good luck this weekend. We look forward to watching you on Stafford Speedway TV. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Again, guys, that was Bert Myers running with Keith Rocco this weekend for the TC13 Memorial Race at Stafford Motor Speedway. But when we return here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, we will have your uh, Wheelan Engineering Short Track Spotlight of the Week. Wheelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Each and every week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, we get the opportunity to highlight one of NASCAR's short tracks brought to you by Whelan Engineering. This week up in the northeastern part of the United States, Wall Stadium is a third-mile high-banked paved oval track in Wall Township, New Jersey. Opened in the spring of 1950, the track was an early home to racing stars Ray Evernham and the Truex family of Martin, Martin Sr., Martin Jr., and Ryan Truex. It also hosted a NASCAR Convertible Series race in 1956 and a NASCAR Grand National Series event in 1958. Some more prominent drivers over the years have included Tommy Elliott, Charlie Kremer Jr., John Blewett, Jimmy Blewett, Jimmy Spencer, and Richie Evans. Wall Stadium has closed and reopened a number of times following the 2007 season. New management has kept the track open since 2011, and the track currently runs Modifieds, Sportsmen's, Limited Late Models, Four Cylinders, and Legend Classes. After the 1947 season, the management and staff added a race for the Thanksgiving weekend titled the Turkey Derby, which is a 150-lap open competition race for modified stock cars, which has attracted many of the top drivers in the division. After a successful debut, the race grew in stature and popularity and in 1981 attracted a record field of 75 cars, including NASCAR national champion Richie Evans. From 1974 to 1992, the modified race was contested as a 150-lap event. And when the years went by, the format has changed to now three 50-lap events. Again, that is Wall Stadium up in Wall Township, New Jersey, one of the racetracks that many of the modified series do visit in the Northeast. And that is your Wheelan Engineering Short Track Spotlight of the Week. Wheelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top nine miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. Power isn't born, it's built over time. For over 65 years, Hercules Tires has been providing the muscle to move more drivers. Whatever the vehicle, whatever the terrain, and we back it with a powerful protection plan. So wherever the road or the trail takes you, we have the selection, value, and strength to get you there. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. 
Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. I'm not ready. Hang on. Too bad. You're ready now. Well, this past weekend, <laughs> many racetracks across the country. Guy, I love working with you. But anyway, <laughs> many racetracks across the country, fortunately able to run their regular seasons, their regular weekends. The Bobby Isaac Memorial was hosted at Hickory Motor Speedway, one of the bigger races that that short track puts on throughout the year. A new winner to victory lane, though, Sam Butler captured his first victory with the new team DLP over Josh Berry and Ryan Millington. So a pretty cool victory for him, pretty much beating two of the leading national points championship standard uh, contenders at the moment. Uh, Carteret County had their late model stocks where Boo Boo Dalton captured the win over Brandon Clements and Jason York. Claremont Speedway hosted the Granite State Pro Stock Tour where Derek Griffith won over Angelo Belsito and Joey Pohl. Slinger Speedway had their super late models, Luke Fenhaus with another win over Steve Appel and Ryan DiStefano. And at CRA, they were also at I-44 Speedway alongside the Arca Menard Series. In the super late model, it was Carson Hosevar, Michael Simcoe over Travis Braden. And in the all-star race, Cody Coughlin over Travis Braden and Cole Williams. Madera Speedway busy out on the West Coast in California. In the pro late models, it was Buddy Shepard, Trevor Huddleston, and Carlos Vieira. And in the junior late model division, it was Bradley Erickson, Jake Bullman, and Cabe McClenny, McKenney, McClenney. One of those. That's Keith all Rocco I got for you, Kyle. SK, Keith Rocco won the SK Modified Race at Stafford Motor Speedway. Hopefully it goes a lot smoother this week with Bert up here. Uh, the race took over two hours because of guardrail repair for the SK. So um, hopefully we don't have a full moon this Friday night like we had last week. Uh, Josh Berry is the current Division I point leader in the NASCAR Advanced Auto Parts Weekly Series over Ryan Millington. Just 20 points separate those two. You mentioned Hickory Motor Speedway. You were in action this past weekend at the Hickory Motor Speedway. What was it like to get back behind the wheel of a race vehicle for the first time in, what, almost a year? I think it was Vegas weekend last year, like the week before Vegas weekend, that you last raced. And we're approaching at that point of the calendar now. So it's been about a year. Uh, yes, and I am definitely out of shape, needless to say. I was uh, a little arrogant in thinking that I could get back behind the wheel between a 35-lap truck race. It's a super truck. And, uh, yeah, no, I've, I will go to the gym every single day this week and continue forward because I was good for about 10, 12-lap runs, and then I'd get a little tired after that. So uh, it, it was so much fun, though, to get back behind the wheel. And it's fun, Kyle, and I think a lot of people that can relate to this that are listening or watching that have had racing careers to some extent and now do it on more of a hobby-esque side of things. Um, it's a really good time when you can get back behind the wheel and have no pressure to perform. You're going out there and you're just having fun and you're getting the chance to race again. And um, that's how it was. It was a lot of fun. I enjoyed working with James Edwards and that whole team, uh, getting back behind the wheel at Hickory, seeing a lot of my late model uh, and short track friends. And I get to do it again this weekend and next weekend as well. So I've got, uh, we're recording this on Monday. I've got. Uh, about five more days to uh, be able to race and not fall out of the seat. So my, my chances are not looking very good, but we'll, well take it. Well, it was great seeing Hannah Newsom, I mean, Newhouse, back yeah. on the track <laughs> for the first time in a year. You need to start doing what, and we'll talk about her in a moment, Julia Landauer does. She gets those, you know, the, the weights and practices the whole steering thing. Oh, yeah. Maybe, a, maybe an option. Yeah, Dylan. Uh, is a CrossFitter, and so he does all of his CrossFit stuff. So I did. I've been doing CrossFit stuff with him and dying. Um, but speaking of Julia Landauer, good little bridge there. The NASCAR Euro Series finally back in action. They've obviously been put on hold for a lot of the summer. So they are having their first race this weekend at NASCAR Italy GP or NASCAR GP Italy. Um, Julia Landauer had been scheduled to run the whole season and was not sure if she was going to be able to compete this season in the NASCAR Euro Series due to travel restrictions. But if you follow her on social media, fortunately, she has been able to make that trip over to Europe and will compete this weekend. NASCAR Pinty Series, though, also in action this weekend. They will be at Jacasa. Cole Powell is making his return to the series as well, uh, getting back behind the wheel. And believe it or not, Kyle, the Arca Menard Series is off this weekend. I don't know what half those drivers are going to do with themselves. Aren't they in Toledo this weekend? I think it's Toledo and then Bristol next week. No, I think they're off this weekend because okay. ARCA East is at New Hampshire. 
Oh boy, oh, hold up. Well, you start talking and I'm going to look this up. New Hampshire Motor Speedway was canceled and they moved that event to Toledo Speedway. Just ask Kaylee Deegan because she hates Toledo Speedway and was not excited that she has to go there for a third time this year. And she's also unhappy because the dirt race, the one dirt race that she was looking forward to this year at DeCoin, was also uh, canceled this past week, which we knew about a week and a half or two weeks ago, and that was moved to Winchester. So it's been a bad week for Haley after leading so many laps. And uh, yeah, now she has to go to, I believe, if you're looking at your screen right, Toledo Speedway this weekend. If anyone's good at Excel spreadsheets and wants to completely redo my master schedule that I've tried to redo about 10 times that has... Not only the three national series, but the Arca Menards East, West, Menard series with the Sioux Chiefs showdown, the Pinties, the Euro, the Canadian, and NASCAR Wheel and All-American large series. Oh, and the modified tour races? Holler at me because it's a mess. <laughs> well, I don't even know. They're in action this weekend. There's just a couple of races left as well for the Sioux Chief showdown, uh, which continues, I believe, at Bristol. Bristol is going to encompass everything. The Arkham Menard series will also pay East points, and it will also pay Sioux Chief showdown points. And, and that's what's happening with a lot of these realignments, uh, losing races. Uh, some of these national series events are also going to pay points for East and so Sioux Chief showdown. It's okay, Hannah. It changes, I feel like, almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. But before the show is over, you can apologize and say you were right, Kyle. You're right, Kyle. Just take Thank that. You. Just take that. Put that down. Today's date. Again, it's uh, Tuesday. Oh, it's Tuesday. It's not even Monday that we're recording. Tuesday, September 8th. Um, yeah, Kyle Ricky was right. So that being said, have fun this weekend in Stafford, Kyle. Uh, tell Bert Myers hello for me. I'm looking forward to maybe I'll catch some of that since it is a Friday night event on StaffordSpeedway.tv. And again, a lot of racing action that you can catch over the weekend as well on NASCAR NBC's Track Pass. Uh, with the Modifieds, the Arca East, and, uh, oh yeah, because Arca East is at Toledo. <laughs> so many things going on this weekend. I'll be back behind the wheel at Hickory. So we look forward to bringing you guys more racing action next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. I'm Hannah Newhouse for Kyle Ricky and producers Craig Moore. We will see you guys next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. You've been listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Whelan, also brought to you by Hercules Tires. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network, all rights reserved.